idea was that uh, I read one uh, poem before we start with the Sangha, we're reading uh, Radharasa Sudhanidhi. So I will keep this plan and uh, I will read one song uh, which I didn't read uh, like this public publicly. I just uh, sent it to Gurudev and now we will start with this uh, and uh, later we will continue with Nectar from Radharasa Sudhanidhi. Is it okay? Now this is a song uh, which uh, came from one of my meditation. It's a little bit longer, but uh, I think this will be enough understandable for you. This is a, a name of song is a Radha Kund meditation. It's night, tucked away in silence, the universe rests. Heated world stumbles, slowing down. In homes of fainted hearted, fear has locked the front door. Summoned by silence, sleep descends on tired faces. For most of them, dream continues even when at dawn they open their eyes. Wandering endlessly, they seek what is already within them. However, there are awakened ones. Hearts of manjaris are wide open. And that's why they never sleep the sleep of wanderers. Those awakened ones are the eternal companions of those for whom their hearts were opened. They wear the glow of yellow tourmaline on their palms. On their bodies are the clothes worn by their queen. And they look, they see her everywhere. When they close their eyes, she is even closer. She is a flame in their chests. They are sparkles of that flame. They are always nearby and always follow the trail of her gaze. And now they are here silent, but always ready. Their faces shine like the water surface of small magical lakes nearby. They stand next to the one that bears the name of their Swamini. In that water are flakes of silver that a breeze has brought down from Moon Planet. It contains the intoxicating body odor of a beautiful couple, and it extinguishes their longing that brings them here. That fragrance is tasted only by lucky ones, but it in grace. And that is mercy of those who are always awakened for their queen. As well, as for deep longing of all of those who would with open palms step into that world where love is everything. This love also comes to that water in which the moon is immersed. Silence around it is waiting for magical sound of the golden bells to come. That sound approaching soon, and Cosmos stops breathing. Silvery Lake embraces tender feet that dip into it, and water becomes a liquid love. Body of beautiful Rajeshwari plunges into that water, which leaves only for her sake. Step by step, she dives in as water play gracefully. 
spreading love that attracts even the most attractive. Moon at bottom of the lake turns red with color of her feet and from touch of the palms surface of water becomes yielded. That color can only be evoked to the canvas with love of those painters who painted their hearts with light from her face. Most handsome among the gopis stops not far from shore. A restless golden thread that joins water to the fragrant ether around it flickers between her breasts and the navel. She rises her beautiful head. The light of thousand sapphires condensed and descended to her eyes. That glow is now walking along the shore behind which is another lake. Her small ears, like shells, are waiting for familiar sweet sound of an instrument. They want to send it to every pore on her body, which always trembles when she hears it. The sheen of pearls appears behind her lovely parted lips. From them softly blossom words, which are the names of one who enchains all free worlds. But no one is her, nor can anyone bewitch him as she does. And no one hears that call. The magnet for those words is Govinda's heart itself. Flute at his belt did not hesitate. That melody was soon walks on skin of the darling of Rindavan. Shore that connects two ponds soon welcomes Murli Manohar's feet into its palms. His rosy gaze is quickly lost in sapphire glow from two small round windows on Radha's face. Lake call him with scent of Radhika's body. It calls him by her name, which waves right on surface of the water. He looks, he looks calm, but only Kinker is on the shore, know that his mind is hypnotized by that miraculous sight. He would like to run toward her if there is no this water but it gives a special meaning to that moment, as well as turning the wheel of entire universe that is set in motion by that love. Yellow dot plunges into a fragrant lake, and with every step he takes, a lotus flower emerges from it. Now he walks the path of flowers to his beloved. Overcome with sweet drunkenness, the lake plays with the waves around them. Lotus flowers approach the beauty in white dress. Mohan's gaze rests on Radha's beautiful face, whose color has no name. He sees beautiful himself in her eyes, lavishly adorned with her love. She sees adorable self in his eyes, adorned in the same way. Tears tremble on Krishna's cheeks as he whispers name upon which honey flows. Oh, Ladli, that was all he could say. Heart on his lips was speechless by the beauty before him. Then he does something that makes her eyes widen, and blue from them now gives the lake a purple hue. With folded palms, Mohan scoops up the water of Radha Kund and rises it above head 
of the queen of Raja. Then he parted his fingers, letting water pour down on her beautiful head. Fragrant drops slide over her hair, eyes, neck. Out of conge congealed love, Radha Kund cries on Madana Mohini's face. Water in his hands rises several more times, and sparkling drops write most beautiful poetry on her face. Not long after, water of the Kund also rushes into tender palms of Rishabhan Nandini. Now she bats beloved with his liquid love. One that has only one purpose, to make happy the one to whom it is directed. That truth is also known to lovely girls whose feet are dipping into the lake. Their hearts slowly approach excited couple surrounding them. In their hands, are trays with many petals on them. They were offered by flowers from most hidden groves of Raj. It is one that stands and exists only to further intoxicate the lucky shore. It is now eagerly waiting to be accepted by figures of Shyam and Shyam Pyari. They take it without hesitation. A handful of colorful petals from Gopal's palms fall silently on Radha's dark hair, shoulders, chest. They are accepted by weight traces of the water of love that sparkles on her skin. But the flower petals soon found their way to Mohan's bluish body as well. Again and again, soft palms of Hema Sundari open about the head of curly hair Keshava, increasing his happiness. Lost in love, eternally young divine couple love in ecstasy. The murmur of thousands of mountain rivers and singing of millions of birds of paradise merge with that laughter of pure joy. Oh, my dear ones, whoever is touched by drops of your happiness no longer knows a greater joy. He exists for that, and there are no other desires except you. Oh, Krishna, thank you for the palms on which I place a bowl of water with which you wash Radha's face. Oh, Radha. Thank you for sweet juice from your feet, which always flows when I pour clear water on them. Because it is juice of eternal life. That's all we drink, and we are always thirsty. And whoever tries it once never dates another. Oh, dear Strada, thank you for the tears and laughter ravishing. Thank you for your love. So thank you too for attention. That's all. Thank you very much, Radha Kripa. Thank you. So now we can uh, uh, continue. So I uh, have chosen uh, uh, verse uh, 214 from Radha Rasa Sudanidi. I must say that it was very difficult to find the proper, uh, the proper part here because uh, this Radha Rasa Sudanidi, it's like one sweet cake, really. It's a, each piece you take, it's the same taste, really. But I choose this one because uh, 
it is um, uh, there is explanation about uh, importance of the simultaneously practicing two parts of devotional service in a raganuga part uh, mean internal and external what is uh, important for all of us sadakas here so i will read first in sanskrit radha pada ravindo chalita nava rasa prema piyusha punje Kalindi kula kunje hridi kalita, mako dara madudia bava, shivrinda ranya biti lalita ratikala, nagarin tam gario, gambira i kanu ragam manasi paricharan, mis britania kada siam. Translation when will, when will I forget everything else? while mentally serving that heroine who is expert in all the arts of love making who is seen on the lovely forest parts of Shivrindavan and who has deep passionate feelings accepting a very sweet and devoted mood in my heart i will dwell in a kunja on the bank of the yamuna that is filled with an abundance of the fresh nectar of love rasa that flows from Shri Radha's lotus feet. Mm -hmm. May I read once again or okay, let us read once again and then if somebody wants to say something, when will I forget everything else while mentally serving that heroine who is expert in all the arts of love making, who is seen on the lovely forest parts of Shivrindavan and who has deep passionate feelings, accepting a very sweet and devoted mood in my heart, I will dwell in a kunja on the bank of the Yamuna that is filled with an, with an abundance of the fresh nectar of love rasa that flows from Shirada's lotus feet. So may I say something or somebody else, Guru Dev or somebody else want to give some commentary of these beautiful words? Nobody? Okay. When I read it, uh, first of all, I catch uh, one world uh it maybe seems uh, insignificant but uh uh it's a uh, took my attention actually when um Prabodhananda saraswati said uh, when will i forget everything else while mentally serving as we know Prabodhananda saraswati is uh, one of dearest radicals uh, Ashtasaki friend and <laughs> he cannot uh, uh, actually his pure soul cannot uh, allow that some other thoughts other material things enter in uh, his uh, mind uh, during the such a lovely meditation and I guess that is out of his humility he asking when this is uh, actually for him I think uh, uh, unnecessary for the band is over is over in the flow of love actually and uh, also we like a sadaka can realize then we when we practice our daily meditation uh when uh, flow of love enter in our heart when we really establish connection with radhika with our ishtadev 
through the service in our meditation, this uh, other thoughts cannot approach us actually, because this uh, stream of love is so strong, is so overwhelmed that these thoughts simply cannot enter in this realm of uh, exchange of love. It's really like this, but uh, uh, Dananda Saraswati show us uh, this sign of humility <laughs> that uh, I, that uh, she has to achieve this uh, 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 this kind of meditation. But uh, we know that uh, for him is uh, not a problem for for establish such a deep connection. Uh, so he mentioned here also Radhika's passionate feelings. Uh, of course, we know that these passionate feelings is uh, uh, first of, of all directed towards uh, her beloved Mohan, actually. But in further, he said accepting a very sweet devoted mood, uh, we can uh, realize that uh, actually we, as uh, her servants, uh, maid servants, uh, also have to uh, simply accept this sweet mood. And this sound uh, uh, very simple, just accepting, but uh, think it's uh, really like this. Because uh, uh, all our sadhana and spiritual practice uh, uh, don't have um, such a deep value if we don't, we don't really accept this love. And uh, this love, a love, loving service should, should be performed with this uh, passionate mood that we have to serve with full heart our Swamini, our Radhika. So each of these words really is very, very significant and tasteful. Because uh, this, all these words in uh, Radha Rasa Sudanidi, we cannot uh, uh, watch uh, like um, just some philosophical explanations, actually. This is full of rasa and full of taste uh, for uh, everybody of us who is touched even by the drop of Radhika's love. Just to listen to this, uh, then verse, this uh, becoming a melody, actually, this becoming this, uh, just to listen the sound of these words, it ena it's uh, enough to connect with her. As he said, accepting a very sweet and devoted mood in my heart, I will dwell in a kunja on the bank of the Yamuna that is filled with abundance of the fresh nectar of love rasa that flows from Shirada's lotus feet. It's a melody song. Really. So somebody else want to give some commentary for this verse, maybe please. There is I didn't see how many devotees. 51. Please, mm -hmm. if someone want to share some emotion. You are welcome. 51, Jai 51 devotee. Jai Shiradi Jai Gurudev. Hello. Thank you so much, Radha Kripa Kataksha, for your, your lovely poem and also for this introduction to the verse. There's so much to be said here. <clears throat> One point that's very special for me is. Um, the word forgetting and uh, it's discussed several times in the commentary as well remembering forgetting and forgetting is a very special experience because um, it's an operation of the mind It's material. Forgetting is a material experience. 
So we can easily, in a Sadika Vesh, we can easily forget things, and we do, don't we? We can forget to concentrate on our on our bhajan, we can forget to focus on radha, we can forget many things, we can forget our hearts even. But when we imagine what sad, um, Siddhavesh is, Siddhadeya is, what the experience of spiritual, the spiritual world, the spiritual plane might be. There, there's nothing to forget. Not because we remember everything, no. There's nothing to forget because everything is present. Everything that has meaning is already right here, right now. There's nothing far away. We long for nothing. There's nothing we don't need. Everything we need is there. So, uh, spiritual forgetting is almost nonsensical, a contradiction. The soul doesn't forget. The soul is full presence of all experience and all feeling. So in a way, it's the definition of the soul. The soul is what? That place where nothing is forgotten. All feelings, all experiences are there. So it's a way of making the difference between the material world and the spiritual world. And this is commented in some different ways in the commentary you'll you'll see in a moment, but I just want to draw your attention to 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 this. Thank you very much, Bella. Someone else wants to give some commentary, impression, experience, emotion, whatever. Or we can continue with the commentary of uh, Ananta Das Babaji. Okay. So, headline of this commentary is a sweet mental service. Raganuga practice is of two kinds. By Antara Haradui to Sadhana, by Sadaka Dehe Kore Shavana Kirtana None Nija Sida Dehe Kori Abhavana Ratridine Kore Vraje Krishna Rasevana. And this is a verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 22. There are two kinds of practice, external and internal. Externally, by hearing and chanting in one in one's external material body and internally, mentally, by thinking of one's own Siddha Deha, spiritual body, in which one serves Krishna in Raja day and night. Maybe we can stop here and uh, say something if someone have inspiration. Jananda ji, please help us in deeper understanding and entering. Thank you very much, Nanda Kuripakataksha ji. Just hearing, we are enlightened. 
So, sadhana bhakti is two kind. Bhaiji bhakti and Raganunga bhakti. And what is the purpose of sadhana bhakti? To attain Baba bhakti. So Baba bhakti means we attain stage of rati and Baba. So Gurudev is saying, this is Lati and Baba is very strong feeling. And uh, so one, one day some person asked question, where this feeling is coming from? Then I was a little bit meditating and then my feeling was like this. Krishna has Satchit Ananda. So, so Super Soul has Satchit Ananda. So we are part and person of Super Soul Krishna. So we have also a small tendency of sat, chit, ananda. So this from ananda and chit coming from feeling. And then this feeling, bhakti is, and according to Ananda's Baj Maharaj, bhakti is doing this some bit Sorry, <laughs> difficult. Tambit and uh, Pradini. So this feeling coming from soul, but uh, our feeling is present moment is mixing ego, our false identification. So to, to get rid of this false identification, in other words, material identification or material desire. There is two way for, for practice. This is Anandas Babaji saying, external practice and internal practice. A Bhaiti Bhakti means, Bhaiti means Rule and following rule and regulation means usually we do only this sadaka deha, this material body using some seva for our ishta deva. But Raganuga Bhakti will start by the mercy of Guru Dev, Guru Manjari. If we find out our ishta dev, what is the Devi and our spiritual identity? It's called Swarupa. And then this Swarupa is, Prabhupada say, mental concocted body. Means mentally uh, imaged body. This is spiritual body. And this spiritual body is here mentioned this kind of mental practice. Anandas Babaji say this is sorry internal, internal, internal means mentally. Sometimes Anandas Babaji mentioned Raganuga Bhakti is mental religion, mental mano dharma. So Raganuga practice we do. In this sadaka deha plus mental meditation. This mental meditation, we needed our swarupa and we need ishta deva. We need 
relationship with Ishita Deva or Ishita Devi. For our case, if we want to attain Babo Ura Sarati, so we feel I'm Radharani's maid servant. Radharani is my Ishita Devi. And then this book, Radhara Sasadanidi and Birapak Sumanjari, this book mentioned how to practice our mental meditation or internal meditation. So this is, so Gurudeva's, Gurudev's teaching is very simple because Identification, we identify, I'm this body. And we want to change consciousness. I'm, I'm a soul. And soul has spiritual body, which is called Swarupa. And then Swarupa, we need Ishtadeva, relationship. And then in this relationship, in this spiritual body, we do mental service, internal practice. This is called the Raganuga Bhakti. And this Shurabanan, Kirtanan, Sumaranan, this we do both way. Means we can do Sadaka Deha, also we can do Siddha Deha. So therefore, Guru Dev's saying, even chanting, we can meditate. Like a good day's meditation is Lada, uh, Mohan, embracing each other, and then calling us. In this internal practice, we need to hear from Lashka Vaishnava. Like uh, our Guru Dev, our Goranga Sundara, our Radha Kripaka Daksha, Uttavaji, etc. So then, this feeling come into our heart. Then, because spiritual body means feeling body. This feeling is condensed then we, we, we have spiritual body. We can realize more and more. At first, our feeling may not strong. And then Ananda, Ananda Maharaj is saying, this feeling coming from association with Rashka Vaishnava, especially hearing. So this hearing we can meditate, also we can feel more. And I'm slowly, slowly realizing why Guru Dev is saying every time feeling, feeling. Because Raganuga Makti is essence, this we need feeling. And strong feeling Radhika has. And if we want to have Baba Urasarasa, Manjari Baba, we should have same feeling like Radhika. And then same feeling, this feeling we have to follow, this feeling. This is Raga Anuga. Raga means strong, loving feeling. And Anuga means following. So this following feeling, we following Guru Dev's feeling, we following this uh, Torasi Manjari's feeling, we want to feeling the Shuripada's Manjari's feeling. So, I don't know, this is uh, my feeling. So, this Anantas Babaji said, two kinds of bhakti. But the, especially I, I'm so unfortunate. I'm doing only Sadaka Deha practice. But by the mercy of Guru Dev, we are also now practicing this internal practice.
or mental practice as my Siddha Deha. So Siddha Deha need feeling. This feeling we need association of Rashka Vaishnava who has feeling, who realizing his Swarupa. Rade Rade. Sorry, I may, I may use very, very difficult words. Please forgive me. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Someone else? It was very nice explanation, Jayananda. Thank you. Actually, in these uh, two sentences, uh, I've explained actually what is uh, our real gold which we have to rem remind ourselves uh, each uh, moment each uh, uh, period of the day uh, when we performed our spiritual practices and also out of this what is our really goal this is very important uh, because uh, Otherwise, if you do, uh, we don't have uh, this goal always in ourselves, uh, our uh, sadhana, our bhajan can become uh, dry and can become, um, uh, can enter us in some other realms uh, which have connection with the uh, uh, identification of this body, of this ego, actually, that we are good scholars, read many books and uh, have a nice position in our um, religion or community of whatever. So our real goal, as you said, is uh, love and achieve our spiritual body, actually. And all this we have when we take uh, our japas and approach our altar and in, uh, or invoke Radhika in our meditation and serve her, Always we have to remind ourselves the goal of our life and our spiritual practice is to establish this lovely connection with our Ishtadev and make her happy and spontaneously we becoming uh, very happy with this, uh, this happiness and love, always uh, going in both sides. This is the nature of love. Especially because we're speaking here about unconditional love. This is not some temporary material life, um, what will dive in uh, forgetfulness, lifetime after life, lifetime. Uh, this is unconditional love, which we have desire to develop, desire actually just to give the pleasure of our beloved and nothing else. And this uh, pleasure for us coming to our nature, actually, even if we don't want it. And this uh, uh, relishing the taste of Radhika's feet, actually, of the service of her feet uh, is uh, actually most uh, uh, important and most uh, uh, how to say it's the uh, biggest of all spiritual parties practicing uh, to achieve this uh, this uh, relishing this sweetness actually of this of this uh, service you know because uh, in the begin beginning we performed so many times uh, uh, reverential uh, this uh, this uh, service in a reverential mood with the reverence and it, this uh, will uh, never be, be uh, give satisfaction of our heart, actually. This is just one step uh, which uh, each one actually who yearn for Manjari Bhava, who want to uh, really accept uh, this precious gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have to uh, receive with open heart, actually, and uh, step over this reverence and come in the spontaneous uh, practicing uh, of Manjari Bhav, actually, when we taste this sweetness of this service, we can realize there is a 
nothing else or if we have to achieve just uh, actually uh, show every day gratefulness for our Guru Dev, Ishta Dev and the Charyas. So somebody else want to share something? Experience? Okay, let's to continue. Although Smarana or remembrance of Radha Madhava's past times and one's own service therein is the main limb of Raganuga Bhakti, still the external practice of hearing and chanting should not be neglected. The external practice of hearing and chanting nourishes the internal remembrance of the desired service and the internal remembrance also nourishes the external practice of hearing and chanting. An effort to give up hearing and chanting untimely and only to continue the mental service will not be successful. Rather, the mind will gradually dry up and, be, and become contaminated by, by sensual thoughts. Both external and internal practice must be done, therefore. Rade, yes. if I can share something. Of course. So, we can see here how the proper hearing and listening is important. It's not that everything what we are listening and hear is a proper hearing and listening. We should do that deeply from our heart. Like Maharaj Janandaji said, from the feelings. But not from the mental feelings. But we should try to penetrate deeply up to our soul and connect ourselves with the needs of the soul, with feelings of the soul. And in that moment, the hearing is very effective and brings the subject directly to the heart. So without proper hearing, actually it's very difficult or almost impossible to practice proper smaran. Because here, Prabhupada Saraswati is praying for mental service. And I, like Kudavaji said, and forgetting is belonging to the mind level, mind realm. I want to forget. This is desirable to forget whatever minds is producing. But I want to hear from the heart and remember the words of Acharyas from the heart. This kind of remembrance is coming from the heart, not from the mind, also like a hearing. So this is another level of remembrance, another level of smarana. And we can say real smarana, which is bringing devotee to the deep meditation. So, in that way, Smarana is the main limb of Raganuga Bhakti. But it can be attained and also nourished constantly through the Shravana and also Kirtan. And this is the art, actually. It's not going 
over the night. It takes some time. For devotee to learn this art of hearing, because he, like Radha Kripa Kataksha in the beginning, in the deduction, he said, he's mentioned this word of acceptance, because we have to accept our goal, our beloved Radhika, we have to accept all the instructions of Guru, Acharyas, scriptures, Guru, Sadhu, Shastras, to accept without any blockages. Then hearing is going smoothly, directly to the heart. Because listening and hearing, I think in all languages, there is a subtle difference actually. We can listen so many things, but what we really heard, that's another thing. We heard those things which we accepted. And they are coming in our heart. So Prabhupada Saraswati is saying in the beginning of the verse, when will I forget, like Udavaji mentioned, when I will forget everything? Yes, because I want to engage my mind in proper remembering. Because if we are not practicing bhajana, on Ishtadev or Lila Smara will be immersed in bhajan of this material world. Mind cannot be unengaged. He will he supposed to be engaged in bhajan or deep meditation on the material world or in deep meditation with spiritual reality. Bhajan is unavoidable for the mind. But which kind of bhajan we want and which kind of bhajan we want to forget. Because we are witnessing in these days, very challenging year also, that so many pe people are very, very, very much concerned about different things which are going in this world, especially on the level of politics, economy, and so on. And they are so much immersed in these subjects that, practically speaking, they are constantly, constantly doing bhajan on politicians, on the wars of different names, different forms of main characters, qualities of all these people, and ultimately the bhajan in their pastimes, their lila, their what they are doing. So devotee want to forget all of this. And he knows if I just direct my mind on the mental service of Yugala Kishore, then one day, by the mercy, I will attain natural, normal position of my soul. So, Prabhupada Saraswati is speaking here from the level of Sadaka, Sadaka Vish. And he is saying, when I, I cannot see you, my Radha. I don't have a vision of you, my dear. I don't have opportunity to serve you directly. 
but I choose to forget everything else except you and at least engage my mind, my mental conceived body relationship with you through the Smaran. So this is the position of Sadaka. And Jayanandaji very, very nicely said, the goal of Sadaka is Bhava Bhakti, is the middle stage of, but this is the goal of Sadaka. Because when attachment, strong feelings appears in the heart, it's very easy to practice mental manasasiva, like we say. Because the feelings are bringing meditation, not our endeavor. Feelings. Because the material world is also the same thing. We feel some disturbances around us. And automatically our mind is going there. Be why? Because he feels fear, disturbances and so on. Without endeavor. So the same thing we require, we need. But to redirect. <laughs> Same tool, same mind, to attain different goals. And for that, like Jainadaji said, we need, desperately, we need the mercy of someone who has already attained perfection. And this is our goal for practicing. For that, we need constantly to nourish our mind and our soul with proper shravana. And this kind of shravana has to be also one-pointed. And if we are not one-pointed in our shravana, what I only want to listen, then still it's not shravana, which is melting the heart, changing the heart, and so on. But if the Shravana listening, art of listening, from deep feelings and heart, is focused on one subject, automatically, Smarana becomes more deeper and deeper and becoming slowly deep meditation and so on. So. My experience is that many, many sadhakas tried in one moment to reject Shravana and to start to practice only Manasasiddha. But after some time, they felt so bored. And starting to lose enthusiasm because they practice this manas seva only through the mind and intellect, artificially, not with this awakening soul, awaked soul and uh, trying to awake spiritual body. And Baba is giving here warning, don't do this. Nourish your sadhaka wish, sadhaka wish with rasik kata, which you have to listen, and nourish in that way, through your mind, mental conceived body, nourish your spiritual Existence, Baba Dih, Siddha Dih, anyway. And then completely depend on Kripa.
And Baba is saying, mind will gradually dry up without proper listening. This is the nature of mind. This is the reason why everything becomes boring for him. So <laughs> it has to be always nourish, nourish, nourish. Otherwise, he's becoming dry and boring and said, okay, I know all these lilas. I heard so many times these Vilapa Kusumanjali and commentaries. I know by my heart and my maya, I know everything this. But like Gurudev said, these commentaries are meant for realization, relishing and realization. And if there is no realization, then we are jumping on hundred other books or scriptures or whatever. No. But this is the process. So we always have to, to check ourselves. What I'm doing? Is it according to the desire of my Gurudev and the Charyas? And am I doing really proper bhajana? Or my mind just going, are slipping away on an external bhajana, on this external world? And this material energy is so expert to give us different kinds of subjects for bhajan. But sincere devotee who define and accept his goal will recognize that. Someone who doesn't have a goal, he cannot recognize when his mind is going out of that. Only when we have a goal, we can understand, oh, now my mind just went out, went astray, isn't it? You know, I want to drive from Rijeka to Zagreb here, you know, I know my goal. And immediately when I start to go left and right, I understand, no, no, this is not the way to attain the Zagreb. Same thing is with Bhajan and Smara. If we have clearly Establish the goal, not realized, establish the goal in our heart. And we are very attached to attain that goal. Then immediately we will understand now my mind is going astray in different direction and I will bring him back. If I don't have my goal, then he will go just left right, up and down, in so many directions, it, it, it is so good, <laughs> like a wild horse. So Shravana, from the Rasik devotees, from their hearts, and connecting our hearts with their hearts, is the essence of our sadhan. Radhe, sorry, I took... Very beautiful. I want to share about the experience of, with Gurudev. <clears throat> so generally speaking, uh, some Babaji is staying like Brindaban, Holy Dam, and then concentrate many hours chanting and meditation without doing any material job. This is ideal one sense, but, but for us, many devotees staying outside the Brindavan, some person has job, family, and how can we do, how can practice this Raganuga Bhajan? And then, Guru Devas find out very, very practical way. What is Guru Devas way? At first we need 
Who am I? For example, I am Radha Dasi. Means my goal is Radhika or Radhika's se- service as Dasi. So at first, Guru Dev's teaching fix ourself, goal, myself, and goal. And then do bhajan. But also, same time, Guru Dev create, maybe Suniti also, <laughs> create this internal Sangha. Every morning, at least every evening, sometimes they do noontime. So, Guru Dev pro- provide opportunity to hearing, listening, this pastime with, with Rashka devotees. And then Guru Dev's teaching like this, one day, one subject to meditate. For example, okay, today we are reading Virapak Sumanjari. Krishna is massaging Radhika's foot or painting foot rock. But Krishna's, Krishna's hand is trembling. And Krishna is so ecstasy. He, he put Radhika's foot on my heart and foot. And then at that time, red rock is on the Mohan's head. So, for example, in this leader, Guru Dev said, whole day you, you meditate. Then we try to meditate. Then slowly, slowly our meditation deep. And my experience is if we away from association with devotee, then our tendency to become dry. Chanting is dry. And our practice may be dry. And then Guru Dev is saying, you do work, good, okay, but you do as service for Radhika. I manjari, my, my, my boss is Radhika. You do the work for, for the Radhika. So if we have family member, someone who has wife, husband, or children, or parents. We have to do some seva, material seva. But we have to think, all my family member is Radhika's Dasi. So therefore, I have to take care of Radhika's Dasi for the pleasure of Radhika. So Guru Dev's teaching is very simple, very, very simple. Just to know myself, who am I? For example, I'm Radha Dasi. And then my Ishtadeva, please fix my Ishtadeva. Oh, my Ishtadeva is Radha Mohan. Or Radha Rani and Radha's Mohan. And I'm Radha Dasi. So in this relation, in this feeling, in this, in this recognition, in this identification, Guru Dev teaching, you do 24-7. And then Guru Dev teaching like this, you practice as Sadaka Deha, Bhagavad Gita, 12th chapter, verse 13 to 12, uh, 20. This verse, ba- Bhagavad Gita, 12th chapter, 13, Bus to 20 bus. This is Manjari is doing. Manjari behaving like this. Or Siddha is behaving like this. Actually, my feeling, my, my humble realization is why we do sadhana <laughs> is we try to follow Siddha. We try to follow this feeling, we have to follow the behavior. 
And then slowly, slowly we become like this. So if we associate with Guru Dev, slowly, slowly this feeling also coming, behavior also coming. And then Guru Dev said, don't check others. <laughs> check yourself. This is, <laughs> this is very amazing. Because we have tendency, I'm boss. So therefore I can check you. This, we have tendency, this kind of ego, many people may have. At least I, I have. So no, you have to check yourself. Don't check others. You have to see others rather than see. So this is Guru Dev's teaching and meditation. And uh, so therefore, this every morning, every evening, we just listening. Then mo many inspiration come. Also, I, I found out, here Baba mentioned, chanting is very important. Generally speaking, we say bhajan. What is bhajan? Many, many explanations bhajan. I think bhajan is chanting with feeling and with meditating. This is bhajan. And if we chanting more and more, and then more and more realization come. One day, Guru Dev said to us, if you chanting, and then more attachment come, then more realization come, more realization come. This chanting means, may, Harekshi Maha Mantra, or this chanting may be Gayatri Mantra. But uh, this Baba also mentioned, without chanting, we have tendency to derive, because chanting is not only Yuga Dharma, chanting give us mercy. Nama Prabhu has special power. Nama Prabhu and Nama and Nami and same. Krishna, Krishna's same is, Krishna's name is same. Radhika, Radhika's Nama is same, but name is more merciful. So this is Acharya's view, view. So therefore, this chanting and bhajan is very important. Like Vinoda Baba, he did not meet any people before doing his bhajan. Like, uh, he, he, maybe I did not know exactly, but he may does every from from early morning to until mid uh, like midday. Then after that he ate, he ate prasada, and then darshan time coming. But our Guru Dev is very special. I tell you, he's not ordinary person. He's very special. He all he already passed all sadhana previous life. He did not, he, he, he does not read book. I was completely surprising. I never seen like, like this kind of person. Don't, don't read book. <laughs> and, uh, you know, anytime he can, we can meet with him. I never, I never seen this kind of sad. 24 seven, he's open, you know. But still he's, you know, I was wondering, Guru Dev, how you, you can do bhajan? You know, but uh, he's very merciful for us. He cut his bhajan time for us. So this is, I so, sorry, I may talk too much. This bhajan is, I think, very, very important. Sometimes we are thinking, you know, oh, I'm chanting 16 rounds. 
oh, I'm doing my, you know, my quota. Well, sometimes may say, oh, I today I chant one rak or finish my rak. No, not to finish. <laughs> if we fix this kind of quota is also good, but if too much fixing is kind of become bidy. And uh, so this is, I think chanting is so important. Baba also say, even Guru Dev say, and our Parama Guru Dev is always chanting. And Guru Dev this morning also say, just sitting with Parama Guru Dev, all question, all doubt disappear. Like our Guru Dev also, <laughs> just you know, come to near and sitting together and, you know, chanting and listening, our problem will also go. No. So this is very, you know, Goranga Sundar explained very nicely. And uh, this chanting, bhajan, is very important. And Goranga Sundar always say, you know, one point fixing. If we are radadasi and fixing radadasi, Everything we see, we behave like Radha Dasi. This behavior is Gita's 12th chapter, 13 to 20 bus. Radha Radha. Radha Radha Maharaj. Thank you for these practical examples. And we can see here our beloved Guru Dev is example of Bhajan Kriya. 24 through 7. Because he is established in his Thai Bhav, he established firmly with re loving relationship with Radhika. And he can practice Kriya outside working, talking, thinking about many, many layers, even of materialistic world but doesn't all these activities kriyas are not disturbing the bhajan for someone who is established in his own swarup identification like you said and his ishtadev or goal so i also learned from gurudev that even a mother can practice bhajan when she is working, bhajan akriya, she is working very complicated work on her job, but in the same time, she is always thinking in the heart about her baby with her mind, with some her intelligence she is doing work she has a meeting sometimes she has to make some very difficult decision even but in the same time she is completely connected with her heart with her loving baby so in the same time in the same manner our beloved Guru Dev is giving us example. Meditate with closed eyes, meditate with open eyes. Whatever comes to you, just accept like a mercy. Whoever comes to you with all foolishness, just accept like a mercy. Serve that person, always remembering, like you said, Jainandaji, that you are doing that for Radhika's pleasure. Because Baba is here, is also mentioning bhajan is okay with, like you said, listening, chanting, and so on. But you added very important point, actually. It should be done for the pleasure of Radharani. For her pleasure. Because now we are 
practicing bhajan also in that in this moment we are practicing bhajan so many devotees are living all around the world in japan in america in croatia germany i don't know from where are they switzerland yeah I see hanuman so but we are doing sankirtana now by listening the words of acharyas trying to put them in our hearts and in that way we are practicing now one hour or how much how many i don't know one and a half hour we are practicing bhajan the point is when this zoom finished like you said when i finish my rounds <laughs> then i start to do other things when zoom finish we should extract what mostly touch our heart forget about everything else what is said what mostly touch my heart and deeply focus your heart and meditation on that subject and this is the reason why guru dev is trying to teach us at least as i understand meditate on details like jananda gave us very nice example meditate on this particular lila but not on all lila in particular moment of that lila when krishna wants to put radharani's lotus feet on his head or on his chest if we are not properly listening it will be very difficult to meditate but if we accept it what we heard not only one day two three days we will just think about this little thinny subject which is touching our heart Udawa ji, you want to say something to add to us? Oh, lots of turning. Thank you, everyone, for this input. Um, Bhajan is, of course, material. It's focusing on... It's focusing on Ishtadev, it's focusing on the Leelas, but it's doing it from a material place. It's something we do together like we're doing now, you so nicely say, Gauranga. It's sincere material effort in the shadow of Leela, in the shadow of Ishtadev, in the shadow of Radha. But in a way, the purpose of bhajan is to not do bhajan anymore, to become siddha. As far as I can imagine, there's no bhajan in siddha Deya. Maybe I'm wrong. Half and half. Tell me, explain. Yeah. Because Raguna Das Goswami, Prabhupada Saraswati, they are practicing bhajan, but also they are relishing in Sadaka Dekh, they, they are relishing bhajan and smaran, dhyan, they are relishing with their Siddha Deha, like you said. Still they are in Sadaka Vish, but they are relishing it. Yes, yes. So I understand this with you, yes, that Badan is a way of reaching across, reaching But at the same the time, day. yes, is the process, is the way how we, but in the same time, this is the goal. When 
devotee is really practicing the bhajan, he is not aware that he is practicing Lila Smara because he has direct vision and he is not aware that he is practicing. He is, the, he is living completely identified with his body and the moment, the Lila, in which, which is coming to him. We should understand the differences between Rati, Prema, and other levels. On the Rati level, Baba Prem, devotee, my understanding is like this, and hope also. <laughs> On Rati level, there is a deep mental service and the lilas which are coming are very vivid we say vispurtis but they are very vivid they are so vivid in the small details the devotee thinks I am directly with Radha. And when the vision finish, he comes back in Bhava Dekh. Again, say, oh, when this past time again will appear in my heart and the mind. I want to forget everything else and just remember what I experienced. So this is Bhava. Level of Bhava. On the prema level, devotees have a direct, direct realization. But on the another level, and because of that they are in samadhi. But on another level, snake, which is not possible to relish in physical body, Devotee, he has a physical experience with his beloved Ishtadya in the form of embraces, kissings, and so on and so on and so on. And this is possible to attain only in Bhav Deha when there is no material body anymore. But for us, sadakas, Bhava is the goal and Prema is the goal. Bhava brings us the visions and Prema gives us feeling of direct realizations. Mm. And this is the fifth goal of life. Oh, okay, we can sp speak later on, but I want to fix on just on that point. And Maharaj Janandaji said, you know, Bhava is the goal for sadaka. This is the middle point of sadhana. We have sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prem bhakti. Sadhana bhakti is going up to the ashakti, deep attachment. From shraddha to ashakti, deep attachment. And in, in that attachment, sambhada is developing is developing. Sambhada, I know for myself, I know my identification and I have a goal. Then second step is Bhav, which is coming only by mercy. On that level, visions, deep visions appears. It's not concoction, it's not speculation, it's not mental conceiving. Mental conceiving is up to that level. And we are sadhakas, we are practicing this mental conceived body, mental conceived relationship. We are training ourselves. That our spiritual identity become more condensed, more thick, 
in emotions and emotions and our relationship becomes more thick, more condensed in, and bloom in the form of attachment. Then first ray of prema in the form of bhava is penetrating by the kripa, by the mercy of sadhu. And then in that level, visions are appears. This is Dhruvanu Smrit. And all visions which Raghunath, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati had and wrote in the form of verses, but also we can say commentaries also, are on that level. So it's a different thing when someone who is dry, uh, diving in a Mahabhav ocean and it's coming down on the Bhava level. And also it's different when the Sadaka from Shraddha is coming up to the Bhava level. <laughs> <laughs> The feeling, experience is different. Because for someone who is coming down on the Baba level, because of the Seva, because of the pastime, because of the different reasons, his meditation is completely natural. And Lilas are coming in the waves, constantly natural. But someone who is advancing from the Shraddha level up to the Bhava. He is putting his effort in Shravana, Kirtanam, Smarana, mental service, to attain that level. This is the goal of his level. And he is crying, please, I want mercy to attain that goal. And this crying gives him a relishment in bhajan. So the essence is that sadaka has to feel separation. And this separation, viraha, slowly will purify the heart and bring him on another level, another step, on another step. And automatically, relishing of bhajan will be much more deeper and deeper. Sometimes I heard Udavaji, and it was also very shocking for me, that devotees, like we say, from spiritual world, wants to come in material world to relish sadhana, because in when they are in material world, they are not in material world, <laughs> like I am. They want to relish this specific way of sadhana in the form of deep separation. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed and taught to all of us that this specific separation, virah is a rasa full of ananda and he relish it in this world and all his devotees and for me who is struggling with my sadhana it's very difficult to imagine but i am learning to accept this truth this fact not making some my own concoctions and so on and so on. Like Maharaj said, just try to follow, although it's very difficult. I'm a very stubborn person. Radhika is constantly making a bhajan on Krishna. Rati Manjari, not Raghunath, Rati Manjari is constantly making, because bhajan, it means I'm always thinking because I always love you, I always feel you. 
And when Radhika is in the lap of Krishna, he is thinking about him so much that suddenly she feels separate from him. <laughs> this is the effect, actually, of deep, 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 deep entrance in the feeling in loving relationship. Bhajan is in the beginning, bhajaning is in the end, bhajaning is in the middle. I tried something. I don't know, Guru, that can help us all. So. <coughs> Sorry, Baya, if I offended you or someone else. No, 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 I'm very uh, open minded. It must be clarified, really. It must be clear. I don't. I have never. I've never heard this before. But I have faith in you, so I will meditate. Don't have a faith in me. No, I'm speaking what I learned from Baba and from my Guru Dev, our Guru Dev. Sorry. Don't have faith in me. I'm useless person. What is the use to have faith in me? You know. No, we have to have a faith really in Acharya Rasik devotees. This is a sangha which we need. And then we will exchange our Sangha by same faith in the same person. Don't have a faith in me. I will bloop. I'm already blooped. Very beautiful, you know, Gora I also I have also shocked. Siddha want to come to in this material world. <laughs> like Raghunathas Goswami, because he want to taste because this 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 material world it is say uh, even in this material world this sadhana bhakti is so tasteful even sometimes siddha want to become like this because gora you know goranga sundara explain this is kind of biraha love in separation in Brindaban, in Goroka, also they may have, but this, this world is more strong, I feel. Because, because really separate, feeling really separate from Radhika, my Swamini. So this intense, in, so much intense fire. So, and also I want to some comment. Why? Why sadhana bhakti goal is baba bhakti? Some some may ask why why not prema bhakti? This is this is very deep deep question. But my my feeling is like this: at the stage of rati, swarupa manifest. So therefore, to in other word, sadhana bhakti is. The aim of Sadhana Bhakti to manifest Swarupa. And then actually, Baba Bhakti is just the entrance of Prem Bhakti. If we, Swarupa is coming, and then soon, soon, soon Prem Bhakti is coming. So therefore, they are separating Sadhana Bhakti, Baba Bhakti, Prem Bhakti. But actually, if Swarupa manifests, and then immediately go Prem Bhakti. But also some Acharya say, this may be, Gurudev may not, may not agree, but uh, Vishwana Chakrabhati Stakur say, in this material body, could not tolerate, because too much Prema is too, 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 too high. So therefore, in this material body could not tolerate, it is say. Some Acharya say. But of course, if we are attain Swarupa, Swarupa, then also another things. If we have a spiritual body, then we can tolerate. But some Acharya say, in this body is premise too much. Some Acharya explain like this. So anyway, so I think Sadhana Bhakti's goal of Sadhana Bhakti to manifest Swarupa means Swarupa Siddhi is our goal. 
This is Prabhupada say Bhagavad Gita page four. So this is, I think, this is a very important point. My, I feel just to, uh, hearing Goranga Sundara, maybe I should comment. Rade, rade. May I share something quick? Jai Guru Dev, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Radhe. Hello everyone. So nice to see you. Thank you so much, Jai Nanda Maharaj, Radha Kripa, Uddhava, Guranga Sundar. It's always a pleasure. Also, prayers, of course, for Mataji, that, that she will manage very nice. One thought that goes through my head sometimes uh, for my small brain, it gets a little complicated with all these levels and how to reach what and what leads into what. Although I think for me, the key is to understand realizing my dependence in this whole process. The nature of my mind is to be independent. I always was independent. And when I have some success, the nature of the mind will think, oh yes, it is due to my independence to my decision, I did it. But slowly, the older I get, the more understanding I can realize that any success that I ever had was was because of, of blessings of Gurudev, Ishtadev, Hanumanji, uh, even the sadhu, the, the sadhu Sangha. Without sadhu Sangha, where, where would I be? So, it's always been a fight. It continues to be a fight, but I, I know I'm on the right track and I feel like I'm winning the fight of realizing that I am dependent on Guru Kripa. And this Guru Kripa is just literally flowing out of all four of you in this class today. And yes, every time I feel my independence coming over, then I need to remember all these blessings. And yeah, I pray that this realization of dependence on Guru Kripa, on my Ishtadev, on Sri Hanumanji, on Sadhu on, on all of you. And yes, that gives me confidence. That gives me uh, enthusiasm and optimism i know i don't act actually need to be optimistic i know it's going to be great so thank you very much sorry for my very beautiful actually i also feeling like this actually we we we, we may we may do some endeavor but uh, always depend on mercy, Kripa. Actually, Gurudev used to say, we, are, we cannot do real sadhana. We are completely depend on our Gurudev, our, our Guru Manjari, our Ishtadev, and all Acharya of our Parampara, and also Nitai Gora. Without mercy, we cannot do anything. Even Vishwana Chakra say, without mercy of Guru Dev, we cannot advance even, even one milli, even little bit, we cannot advance. So therefore, we completely fully depend on the mercy of our Swamini, our Ishta Devi. So this is a correct understanding. I feel some may say, oh, you know, we do so much seba, I'm sad, you know, do so much sadhana. But for me, at least for me, completely depend on the mercy of Guru Dev and our Swami, our Vaishnava's mercy. Sometimes Guru Dev say, oh, I need your mercy. I need all Vaishnava mercy. 
This is showing us we need mercy of other devotees. Because we need, because why we need mercy of Vaishnava? Because Krishna, Krishna is controlled by love of Vaishnava. So if Vaishnava pray, oh, please save this person, then Radhika or Krishna, Mohan, he has to save. Oh, this Vaishna praying, praying, please, please save this person. Oh, he's praying. Okay. I have to, I have to fulfill his desire. So, because we, we used to say every day we are seeing Bancha Karpata Rubyascha, Kripa Sinduva Evacha, Patita nam pa bene bio, Vaishnava bio namo namaha. Vaishnava is like a karpa briksha, desire tree. That means by the mercy of Vaishnava, we are also saved. We can get prema, we can get swarupa. That is reality. So especially we need mercy, our Guru Deya. Also, we need mercy, all the devotees. And we need mercy of our Swamini. And Swamini is Mohan. We need mercy or Saki also we need. Rarita, Vishaka, Chitra, Champakarata, all Saki's mercy also we need. So therefore, Hanumanji is, is, is sharing so great. I think, you know, we need Mercy. I need, I need all devotees' mercy. I need Guru Dev's mercy. That is reality, I feel. Thank you very much, Hanuman. Thank you, Maharaj. May I say Thank something? Thank you, Hanuman. Yes, please, Mataji, please. Um, I want to, uh, to say to uh, everyone here but uh, especially to you Guranga uh, what you say I'm not Bhakta I'm not Bhakta in meaning uh, you mean uh, but uh, everything you say touch me in my heart I cannot remember everything you said but uh, my heart remember uh, and I feel deeply in my heart, you are talking from your heart. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Uh, may I introduce uh, this lady here? Uh, this is my friend uh, who came first time in the Sangha. He requested me to come here, enjoy and uh, listen. So this is uh, my friend. Uh, Antonia, so this is first time to that fear that that uh, she is here. So, oh, thank you. And and what I yeah. want to say to Guranga to uh, about uh, sadhana. Uh, sadhana is not something we do five minutes or one time, as Guranga says. Sadhana is something we do every minute, every second. There is no other way. Thank you very much, my dear. Uh, I'm also not a devotee, and I also don't remember what I said. <laughs> you don't remember what I said, but also I don't remember what I said. I'm trying to speak what is coming, you know with connections know, with my I guru dev i felt it. i felt it <laughs> but what but what you it said feels deeply it feels deeply it's very nice this is radha skripa guru skripa that you feel something so if you feel something just develop that nourish that that this feeling blooms like a flower in your heart more and more and more you know and like you said i i never liked this word sadhana 
actually. I always like <laughs> to say, no, sadhana means life. Because like you said, sadhana is something which I'm practicing. I'm practicing, and after half hour, I stop to practice. After one hour, two hours, I stop, and then I live my life. Now, this is the not real meaning of sadhana. The sadhana means I am living that. I am that. Yes. yes. Consciousness. With my soul, Before full and soul. All the time. Yes. Rade, rade. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. It's so nice that you came to participate. It's very nice that you share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. <laughs> And maybe uh, on behalf of go, sorry, is okay. Sorry, I am talking too much. Maybe I may say because Goranga Sundara is very humble, so he does not want to say I'm a devotee. Or actually, devotee does not want to say I'm a devotee or I'm Siddha, I'm I'm Guru. Devotee does not want to say because. Devotee feel I'm lowest person. Other devotees more high. That is nature of devotee. So therefore, Goranga Sundara says something, you know, very, I'm not a devotee, I'm not, a, you know, I'm, I'm rascal. He may say like this, but uh, we have to accept. He's saying his humbleness. He's this, he's showing us the Vaishna behavior. Sometimes Gurudev say, I'm not Guru. I'm not even Vaishnava. Say, sometimes Guru say, I'm so bad person. But we have to think <laughs> this is due to his humbleness. He's behaving as Vaishnava. Vaishnava never think I'm devotee, I'm great. I am Siddha. No. Even he does not see it. I am Guru. So this I want to add because uh, Goranga Sunda is so elevated and uh, I also touch his, uh, his words. So if devotee says something, something bad about him, but we have to think he is saying due to his humbleness, he is showing us what is Vajna behavior? Because even Chaitanya Charita Murita, Krishna's Kaviraj Gosam is saying, if somebody don't, don't talk about me, if chanting my name, someone who go to hell, because I'm lowest person. If <laughs> Siddha, Krishna's Kaviraj Gosam is also saying like this. So, this is my humble uh, kind of what? Why no. Vaishnava never said I am devoted? Jananda Das. Jananda Das. Do you hear me? Yes. I am Das. Why, why uh, as I, if I understand right, you say, uh, Vaishnava never said, I am devoted. Why? 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 Why, Why never said it? Because this is, <laughs> if someone who has spiritually advanced, someone who is full of love, Interesting speech, spiritual life. This is kind of mystery. If someone who has love, then someone thinking, no, I don't have any love. Even material world, someone who is so great, he feel, no, I'm not great. I'm so humble. Like say, like, you know, like kind of lies. What do you say? Implant, like rice. If rice seed become big, then rice become like, you understand my English is not good. If, you know, some rice 
plant, if seed become very nicely developing, then this rice that can become very bowed down. In Japan, we say this kind of words. So someone who is very elevated become very humble. Someone who has full of love, but no, I don't have any love. This kind of spiritual mystery. But in this material world, we don't have any love, but I have love. We don't have not so much money, I have money. <laughs> you know, this kind of, kind of pretension also there. But a spiritual life is someone who is mature, then become very humble. This is nature. So this is an interesting point. So therefore, Goranga Sundara's saying is not true for me. You know? So we don't think he's very, you know, he's very elevated. But as due to his humbleness, he's saying, we have to accept like this. I think about, uh, for example, flower. You have seed. It's very, very little, very small. And it's growing and growing and growing. And the flower is just nice. Just nice. Don't flower do not need to say, I am beautiful. I am most beautiful. No. We go around and we like the flower. Why a person who is rising, growing, do not made to say, I am beautiful. Don't say by the word maybe, but feel. Feel. Why yeah. not? Because this relate of ego, our ego. I, 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 I know, I knew you will say it, but I think if you feel it from the heart, from your soul, we are everybody have little or more ego. But if you feel in your heart deeply, deeply for yourself or for another people, another person behind you, you feel it and you can say it to them. Why not? We are all part of, I, I like to call him the only one. For me, is he the only one? I don't, I, I am not religious, but for, we are only part of him, the only one. He likes, he loves us, he loves us. He don't want, we will see, we are foolish, we don't, we are, we don't we are like this. No, he, he, he won't see us growing. Feeling, loving. Yes. For me. Yes, loving feeling always there. And also satisfaction may have. So this is a very, you know, interesting point. And uh, slowly, slowly, you know, we feel it. If you do bhajan and uh, you feel more and more. So I... I, you know, I'm not <laughs> uh, realization, but, uh, you know, do, doing more and more, more and more and more, listening, listening, then more we have natural position, natural, uh, normal position. That's, I can say. Oh, that. Thank you. It's more a matter of what you can know <laughs> about yourself. And if you're, in principle, if you are a, a realized being, then there's no material world to which you relate. And so the category devotee or 
Vaishnava is meaningless. So a true, a truly realized devotee will say, I'm not a devotee. And a truly realized Vaishnava will say, I'm not a Vaishnava. If you say, I am that, and I'm imperfect, or I'm on the route, then uh, then it, it means that you're not. One of the yes, symptoms of I, being a Vaishnava is to have been so humble that you don't know you're a Vaishnava. But uh, I'm wondering uh, where, who said it? Who? This word you repeat now. Who said it? When? Is it Krishna? Is it Radha? Is it he the only one? Who? Who? Who said it? Do you understand it? what I mean? No. I don't. Maybe my... Those, th these my words to say... If you are devoted, you are not saying you are devoted because of. But I'm wondering who from the beginning, from the beginning, which words is it? Who said it? Is it Krishna? Is it Radha? Is it... Or is it only... Humans, ego, write it one time for a oh. long time ago. I am just wondering. I, I, I want, I, I am very open to learn, to, to feel, feel, and to learn and to listen. But I, every time I want to know why and whom and where from. Who said the first word? I will tell you. Hmm? Krishna said to Radharani, hmm? okay. I am dancing according to your love. And immediately he said, actually, I'm your servant. And to really feel and relish love, it's possible only from the position of servant, not like a master. And Krishna, although is Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is accepting voluntarily the mood of maidservant or servant of his own love. And in that way, because he is showing his humbleness, and in that way he can receive all love which Radhika can give him. Why it's necessary? Because when he is down, humble, he can receive. If he is up, you know, he cannot receive. Maybe some drops. But if he, if he is coming down to his love and the personification of his love is in the form of Radharani, he said, I am your main servant. I am depending on your love. This is humility. I'm, he's, he didn't say, I'm supreme personality of Godhead. And you have to obey me. No, it doesn't work like that. In the land of love. Mm. Mm. In Vrindavan. Mm. He is accepting the mood of servant and say, this is the way how I can mostly relish and exchange love with you. So, like Janandaji said, this is the mystery of pure love. This kind of love is not existing completely in material world. To the sum Levels, it's okay, but Rarely. completely it doesn't exist. But it exists, and this is our goal, the goal of all souls. All souls. It doesn't matter 
from which country or religion is coming. To be the servant or container for the receiving and reciprocating that love. Yes, so this is I the humility which is coming from devotee, please, from devotee, who is also becoming embodiment of that love. And he said, no, I don't want to be anything else. I don't want to be men. I don't want to be uh, women. I don't want to be uh, this or that or that, these recognitions. No, I don't want. I just want to be your loving servant. And not in this body, but with my soul. Soul is the humble, not the body. Soul is a humble, because this is the, how to say, it's inside. With love, humbleness is going together. If someone has a love, real, pure, selfless love, automatically he's a humble. And someone who is a humble, automatically he has a love. And this love and humbleness is going together. And when we say, I am the lowest, when our acharyas, not me, our acharyas are uh, spiritual, saintly persons are saying, I am the lowest of the lowest. He is not thinking like we are thinking on material problem. He is thinking, you know, I just want to stay in that position to become lowest because in that moment I can closely approach to you. If I am a big, I cannot approach to you so and become so close. The more you are smaller, you are closer. It is. It is. You, 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 you said very well. It is what I mean. Uh, Krishna uh, is not so big. He's serving Radhika because he won't receiving. Radhika won't receiving too. No, first so she it's... wants to give. No, this is the different move. Okay, I don't understand. I'm not back. I don't understand. Okay, but I think no, I'm here, just. But I think here we 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 uh, our souls uh, uh, and loving people. You want uh, pure, pure love, pure people. You want both receiving and giving, receiving and giving, and then. Somebody have to be here, and somebody to be here, and the same person. It's like this, up and down, and receiving and giving all the time. I don't mean one person needs to be here all the time. Conscious about how little I am, but even conscious about how big I am. Both. It can seem like duality, but I think it's not. It's the oneness for me. But I, I want yeah. to know what uh, Radha or Krishna think about it. They are one soul, one heart in the two bodies. Why they have two bodies, although they are one soul? Because of desire to exchange the love. You cannot exchange love with yourself. And Krishna, like a supreme personality of Godhead, and Radhika, like a supreme love. They are taking the two forms to exchange the love relationship but in the same time this is the mystery they are one in the heart and they are one soul and this is transcendental completely position we cannot compare with anything in this material world we just have to accept it 
we just have to why we have to accept it because those persons like you said third one is also here their devotees they have realization of that they are seeing them they are serving them they are hearing them listening them they are touching them and they say no this is absolute truth they are one soul which separated in the two bodies just to exchange the love and again become together and we have to accept if we can or sometimes we need the time their vision because they have been there they are there and they are trans giving us let's say like this they are giving us this information so for that this is very 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 in one sense is the high stage of understanding but on another level it's a very simple if we accept god and his love they want to exchange a love and they want to give the love to everyone and this is the normal position of each soul bus are you separated from krishna and radhika yes otherwise if they are merge in krishna they are impersonal and devotees they don't like this position because only from personal position you can exchange the love if you stay impersonal then it's not possible to exchange the deepest deepest sweetness beauty and love so for that we need a relationship but not like we have experience in our material life it's completely completely another level